Hi everyone, I'm Philip Galinsky of Samba, New York, and in this video I'll be raising an interesting question. Is there more than one kind of Samba swing, or more than one kind of Brazilian swing? Before we attempt to address that question, let's define what we mean by swing in the context of Samba. So ostensibly, the term swing was borrowed from English, um, from a, a U.S. American context where it's used in the jazz world, for example, and it was Brazilianized as swingy. So in Brazilian Portuguese, they say swingy, often spelled S-U-I-N-G-U-E. Sometimes it's just spelled like it is in English, but sometimes it's spelled S-U-I-N-G-U-E. So how is this term used in samba? Well, it's actually used in quite a few different ways. The way that I'm gonna be using it here is to refer to the characteristic phrasing of the subdivisions of the samba, or the characteristic spacing between the notes of those subdivisions, okay? So we're getting a little bit technical here, so let's review if you're not familiar with my rhythmic theory of samba. So there are four main beats in the samba. We count samba in four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And that pulse level, what I call the pulse level, is covered by the first and second surdus of the bateria. The first surdu playing on beats two and four, the second surdu playing on beats one and three. If you have just one surdu in a small group samba situation, it'll play muted notes on one and three and open notes on two and four as its most basic skeletal pattern, let's say. And each of those main beats in the samba can be subdivided into four smaller beats. Okay, so in English we have terms that we use to describe each one of those subdivisions. So the first subdivision of each beat we just call by the number of that beat. So there are four beats in the measure or cycle. So the first subdivision of beat one is just going to be called one. The second subdivision of beat one will be called E, written the letter E. The third subdivision is and, written like a plus sign or an ampersand. I use a plus sign. And the fourth one is a, which I write as the letter A. So we have one, E, and a. And then we do the same thing, but we call the first subdivision of B2, two. Two, E, and a, and so on and so forth. Three, E, and a. Four, E, and a. So let me just sing those subdivisions to you in a very square manner with no swing whatsoever, no accents, no swing. It'll be, the subdivisions will be all evenly spaced as if a metronome or a computer were playing them. So we have one, two, three, four. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one. Okay? Now, of course, in the samba, that's not how those subdivisions sound. there are a couple things that we're gonna to do to those subdivisions to make them swing, at least the way that I use the term swing or swingy. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add the accents. So, so now pretend we're looking at the four subdivisions of each beat. This is the first subdivision, first note. It's gonna be accented. In other words, it'll be loud. The fourth one will also be accented or loud, but not as loud as the first one. And the second and third subdivisions will be quieter or normal. Okay, so we're going to have loud, soft, soft, loud, loud, soft, soft, loud, loud, soft, soft, loud, loud. That's the first thing we're going to do. Some people argue that the swing comes from that, from the from the from that characteristic accent pattern of the subdivisions. Um, there's another thing that we can do, however, which for me is an essential part of the swing, which is we're gonna play with the spacing of those notes, okay? Now, here's where we get into this uh, question. So for many years, I, I learned and I, I taught that to get the swing, that characteristic phrasing of the subdivisions, we're going to keep the first and the third notes as they are when you have four evenly spaced notes, and we're gonna take the second subdivision and we're going to delay it and we're going to anticipate the fourth subdivision, so we're gonna make it early. So what does that do? It creates, if we exaggerate that tendency, we have 
essentially like two notes that are collided together into almost like one note, the second and third ones. And the fourth one we moved over to the left. So it's almost like we have three evenly spaced notes. We have da 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 Okay, so that's an exaggeration of the way that I understood the samba swing, but it's the idea is that we're delaying the second note and we're anticipating the fourth note, okay? So if we play that on the kaisha, which is one of the instruments that plays these basic subdivisions as its most basic pattern, if we take in the right hand, I'm just going to be playing the first and third subdivisions, one and two and three and four and, and in the left hand, I'm going to be delaying the second note and in other words, playing it a little late and I'll be anticipating the fourth note. In other words, playing it a little early. So that's, we get this one and two and three and four and Okay, let's keep it going. Okay, so that's the way that I understood the samba swing. And that's the way I taught it for many years. Fast forward to 2024, or maybe it was 2023, um, when I spoke to my friend Ago Pistora. Uh, Ago is from the band Chimbaleza in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, here in the US. And he actually told me that he put the samba subdivisions, specifically the cajitero, what, what is known in, in Rio as cajitero, which means the trucker rhythm, right? So he did it for tamborin, for a variety of instruments that play those basic subdivisions, right? And what he said is that when he put those so those examples of cajitero into a computer that analyzed the positioning of those four notes, what he found was that the first, and if you take four evenly spaced notes as your beginning point, the first and second notes were evenly spaced. There was no change. The third note was a little bit early and the fourth note was very early, okay? So this is quite different from the way that I've, the way that I learned and the way that I've been teaching the swing, okay? So, and however, I have heard other people explain it that way. Um, so I decided to investigate empirically, not, not by putting examples into a computer myself, but to just empirically analyze what it is that I'm hearing and what it is that I'm playing. And I found that that analysis worked when it, when it comes to playing in a bateria, for example. Um, so, for example, the samba swing on the kaisha, instead of being da kara ka da kara ka da kara ka da, becomes da kara ka da kara ka da kara ka da kara ka da. Okay, which are two different kinds of swing, right? We're not talking about right or wrong here. We're just talking about different tendencies. Okay, so let me explain what what's going on in the second way of of playing the swing. So. What's going on is that we have the first two notes are evenly spaced, but when we get to that third note, which is gonna be in the right hand if you're right-handed, it's gonna be a little early, and then the fourth note will be way early. So to exaggerate that, we get. So it's kind of a, a condensation or condensing of these of these notes. Okay. Um, my, my uh, friend and colleague, uh, David Walter of Ola Samba, uh, ha has put out a, a great video on the Samba swing on Kaisha where he says a similar thing. He says that uh, there is, there is um, no big gap between the first and second notes, but there is a big gap between the, um, the fourth note and the first one. So he has a similar approach to to what I, my friend Ago was saying. So um, and I'll put I'll put a link to to David Walter's video from Ola Samba in here so you could check it out. It's very good. And uh, so shout out to Ago and to David for all the all the great research and information. So now I've started to teach the samba swing, the cajitero specifically in the bateria and in a hard samba context 
in this way because it definitely works. It definitely works and it is what I hear a lot of players doing. So how do, that, that begs the question, how did this, uh, this other form of, 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 of interpreting the swing emerge? Where does it come from? Well, one thing that David Walter says in his video is that the samba swing, Rio samba swing, is different from northeastern Brazilian swing. So for example, if you're familiar with maracatu from the northeast of Brazil, maracatu de baque virado, I, and I did my doctoral research in Recife. I lived there for five months back in 1998, and I definitely heard the swing in the maracatu. And it was very different from the samba swing. So the swing in the maracatu was more like the way that I taught the samba swing before. So, so you might have this pattern. The ganza or shaker would play. Where there is that gap between the first and second notes, okay? You even have this in the samba uh, to a certain extent. So I'm going to just reach into here to, to get my animal skin head pandero. Okay. And if you take the, the way that the pandero, the the condu the, the sound rhythm or driving samba rhythm is phrased on the pandero in a sort of more contemporary situation, it would sound just like the way we were playing it on the on the caixa earlier. Ta caraca, ta caraca, ta. Not the northeastern Brazilian way that I was just describing, but like this. Ta caraca, ta caraca, ta caraca, ta caraca, ta. Where you have, I'll call this the, the, the version B. Let's call it version B. Okay? But, however, when you're in, in some old recordings of samba or shoro music when they're playing a samba rhythm, they do seem to make that gap between the first and second notes. In both A and B versions, we have the a big gap between the fourth subdivision and going back to the first one again. Uh, in fact, what Ago told me is that fourth subdivision tends, is exactly where the third note of a triplet is, okay? In both A and B. But in, uh, in, in some old samba recordings and when I've heard shorter musicians play samba, they do tend to play more like A sometimes. I've heard this. Okay, so what is all this to say? All this is to say there may be more, there may be more than one way of swinging the samba. It, it could be based on uh, history. It could it could be there are many different factors. It could be historical. There could be historical factors. There could be contextual factors. There could be tempo factors. There could be regional factors. Many different things. So this video is really just to raise the question to revise, also to revise the way that I teach playing those subdivisions in the bateria and in a pagode or rodo de samba context, where for the most part I do hear it as B, which is the way that my friend Algo and my friend David Walter have described it. So kudos to them. Um, however, I, I think that A still exists. Um, as I said, you hear it in old samba and, and, and shoro. Uh, sometimes on the pandero, uh, it's, and also, of course, in maracatu and maybe some other northeastern Brazilian styles, you do hear it in, I would argue that you do, it does apply, the A does apply when on the third surdo as well, or, or maybe it does, because, for example, when you're playing this pattern on the third surdo, one, two, and three, four, E, O, one, two, and three, four, E, O, one. The way you play that, that three note grouping could be phrased almost closer to a triplet, which would be more in line with uh, the A version of the swing. So that would be one, two, and three, four, E, O, oh, one, two, and three, four, E, O, oh, one. So a little faster.
or when you're playing this rhythm. So that second note, you're, so you're playing the first, you're playing the first, second, and fourth notes of the of the subdivisions when you're playing this figure on the third surdo. Right? That second note could be phrased either way. It could be phrased where it would be if it were a sixteenth note, where there's no big gap between the first and second notes. Or it could be phrased a little more to the right which would be more in line with the, the A interpretation. Okay, so just to recap, uh, I am revising my way of teaching the, the Cajetero um, in the Bateria and Pagodji uh, and Hadji Samba contexts. Uh, um, use, I'll be, you know, to be, uh, I'll be using the, the B interpretation of the swing for that, because that, that's, that's what I hear happening a lot of the time. Uh, with the third surdu, with, with the caveat, with one caveat being that the third surdu, that, that this uh, A version could apply in certain situations, for example, in the third surdu, and also in uh, maybe older sambas and in samba shoru, within the samba, within the realm of samba. And of course, within the realm of other styles from the northeast of Brazil, like maracatu and others, the A version may apply even more. Okay, so I hope you found this video interesting and useful. Please let me know what you think in the comments and uh, definitely chime in, let me know what you think and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.